I've got one. Uh, it's probably my favorite one out of all of uh, mine that I wish I knew at the very start. And it comes from a really aspirational character on my local group ride. He's a legend here in Irish cycling called Sean Lally. He's 84 years old and he's still on our group ride every Saturday. And he's able to, he'd still crush most cat tree males around the world at 84 years of age. If you look at him from the waist down, he looks 16. His legs are tanned, veined. But he said to me one day, the best advice he could ever give to somebody is watch the good lads. And I just sat with her and I was like, I don't really understand it. And as a, the longer I sat with it and tried to unpack it, watch the good lads is so powerful because if you're out on a ride, when are the good lads putting their rain capes on? When are they taking them off? They're taking them off in, they don't take their hands off the bars in dangerous crosswind sections. They take their hands off the bars when they go past the hedgerow, they take the rain jacket on and off very fast in the most sheltered areas. They drink at the appropriate times. They get out of the saddle without pushing their bike back. They corner smooth. They just, they have it nailed and it's so nuanced. And the more you watch the good lads, the more you can learn. When I went to France racing, we had a, a term that just banged into anyone who's been in France racing. It's le métier. And le métier in English is no real direct translation, but it's kind of the apprenticeship or the craft to becoming a cyclist. And I can't think of anything more central to the craft of becoming a cyclist than this learning almost by osmosis from the good lads. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, yeah. I, I think part of that is just like, we're not special and we're not going to reinvent the wheel and like, just stop pretending. Just, just Someone has figured yeah. it out. Somebody's really good. Just follow a path. Yeah, like you can iterate upon their learnings, but like you said, it's just don't try and figure it out from scratch yeah. on your own. Excuse the short interruption, but I wanted to find a way to bring our little community together to problem solve, to share training advice and to support each other in what can sometimes be a lonely road as we all chase health, happiness and longevity through cycling. To facilitate this, I've set up a Discord channel. I'm going to leave a link in the description down below. It doesn't cost anything to join. It's totally free. Plus, I'm also picking out random winners for spot prizes inside the Discord channel. If you'd like to join it, click on the link down below. All right, let's see here. I got, okay, <laughs> so <laughs> this is sort of a funny phrasing, but a long ride is just like a short ride, but longer. And <laughs> you're going to have to unpack yeah, that one. I mean, so I actually still sometimes do this um, where I go, oh, I'm going to do this big ride. So I need I like, and I get nervous about it and I'm like, Oh, I'm going to need this and I'm going to need this. And like, I, there's all this stuff. And it's like, no, what I go out and I do like, let's say two, three hour ride around my house all the time. And things, certain certain things unfold a certain way. Like my bike doesn't suddenly explode and I need like extra pieces. And like, <laughs> it just, when I go out for 20 hours, it is essentially the same. Like there's, I have never had, some crazy thing happened on some long ride that was somehow different from home. And more and more, I am learning that like, it's just the same. Yes, you're on your bike longer, but like, everything's gonna be okay. You've practiced, like, just take a deep breath. So I see this come up um, for new cyclists more. They're like, they're gonna do their first century ride, right? And there's this, this big thing. And they think, oh my God, like I need to like do this, so all this stuff somehow different. And it's like, no, you, you have done your training. You know what it's like. It will be the same. Yes, it'll be a little longer, but like, it's the same. And technology is such a safety net now as well. Like, I remember do, when I lived in Toronto, I used to do long training rides, but I didn't have an international data plan on my mobile phone. So if I was heading like four hours, I was living at the kind of edge of Toronto on the northern edge. And I used to ride north and I had a section, I called it the kill zone. <laughs> it was like, if anything happens to me up here, I'm so far from being able to like tum a lift, call into somebody's house to ask to make a phone call. I'm just screwed. So the kill zone is the place I was like, always breathe a sigh of relief when I got through the kill zone. It's not actually called the kill zone. It was just my, yeah, my totally. term for it. But right now it's like, you know, just pick up your phone and hit an Uber and you're back home. Yeah. It's so easy. Like you'll figure it out. That, I mean, that's another piece of this is that whatever crazy thing you think might happen, like, first of all, it probably won't. But if something does happen, you will figure it out. You'll figure it out. Like it will not be, you're not putting your life in danger. 
Um, I guess maybe there's somebody that is, but like you're doing a century right. There's you'll figure it out. It's fine. And another one I made this mistake for so long. It's recovery isn't just for pros. We're so conditioned to looking at professional riders in their space boots that inflate and are filled with chilly water that we think, oh, you know, they need it because they're just finishing a Tour de France sort of wealth stage. That's not for me. And for years, I used to look at my schedule and I'd say, okay, so I've college classes all day until maybe 7 p.m. And I can come home and I can squeeze in like a two hour training ride. So I'd ride from like 7.30 to 9.30, come home, have dinner, go to bed. I would have been much better riding for 60 minutes and coming home and having some recovery, stretching, doing some foam roll and getting a proper recovery drink. But I never prioritized any of these things. And it was only when I got a chance to ride with some better riders that I got this phrase engraved into my head where they said, hard training doesn't make you faster. Hard training gives you the potential to be faster. And that potential is realized once you recover properly. And I had this light bulb moment going, ah, like those days I was coming in at like 9.30 at night on my hands and knees and literally falling into bed and thinking I was training hard, that that level of fatigue meant I was training harder than everyone else. It didn't. That level of fatigue just meant I was ruined. My body was close to shutting down. That's a, not a normal level of fatigue. So I wish I knew that. I mean, that is a, very much about our earlier discussion about like understanding when to ride hard and when to not ride hard. And like that whole idea of like, you just can't be everything all the time. You can't go 10, 10. You need to just like dial back. And sometimes that means not even being some, on the bike. And there's some really cool recovery gadgets now for like optimizing recovery. Like I'm thinking, I mentioned the kind of space boots, but I've played around with a power dot as well. Like those electromagnetic stimulators, there's massage guns or anything else that you've come across. You know, I, for me, the best recovery is just to have this schedule uh, and then listen to my body where I go, okay, so I ride five days a week. I take two different days off and re those are like protected recovery. I do not ride on those days. But then midweek, if I'm just like feeling like just terrible, like, no, just, it's okay. You know, I'm not going to lose any fitness. In fact, I'll probably gain it. Just like take the time. And so in terms of gadgets and stuff, I don't have a lot of recommendations. It's more about, for me, it's more about just listening to my body. I also love the sea. That's like, it's free. I live right beside the sea. That's a very powerful recovery tool for me. On a recovery day, I'll often do 60 minutes. And even on a cold, wet day, finishing the session by jumping into the sea, I don't know, it just feels like we're meant to be in the sea. And that's cool. That's a, that's a cool. I don't actually live that close to the ocean these days, but um, that is a cool um, idea. 